Hi and welcome back. Time to have a look at a lab radar. Our lab radar is a Doppler radar chronograph. So it not only measures your bullet speed at the muzzle, it measures it all the way down to some 80 to 100 meters, depending on your caliber, towards the target. Now that is really good for data, working out how fast your bullets decay, so you can work out your BC. It is the only product of its type on the market, and it's used by the lights of Brian Lintz at Applied Ballistics who also use its much bigger brother. Right, as a quick setup, all you need to do, put it on a tripod, it uses a standard tripod mount, this is the lab radar one, which is good for benches. Turn the radar on, aim the radar at your target using the aiming notch. Make sure you're set for your correct velocity settings, so it's rifle for your high velocity, or the pistol symbol for your lower velocity. Ensure that your muzzle of your rifle is the correct distance that you've specified in the menu. There are three settings. This needs to match. Place the rifle, arm the radar, and shoot. That's all there is to it, to use the radar, basically. All in all, why do you want to use a lab radar? Well, number one, simple to use. No light issues. Uh, nothing attached to my barrel. I can quickly change guns. I can have my friend's guns come along and shoot, just create another group. Very easy to collect data very quickly and switch between rifles rather than dismount something to put on another rifle instead of waiting for the barrel to cool. Plus it's a radar, the key to it is the data that it's going to get. It's not only the velocity at the muzzle, it's the velocity right out there. Now there's very few chronographs in the world that can actually do that and to get distance every single meter all the way out there you require a radar. Now let's look at some advanced features of the radar. Now if you're using suppressed rifles or subsonics, you're going to need to use an external microphone. Now it's called an air gun trigger, um, but it also, especially in New Zealand, works for suppressed rifles and subsonic loads. It simply plugs in the side here, and makes it more sensitive to pick up the noise coming from the muzzle of your rifle. One of the great features of the system is its Bluetooth connection, so you can have an app. Now while everything is actually displayed on your screen, that is some distance from you, so it's actually far more convenient to have it on a tablet or a smartphone and just connect to it. Then you can actually operate the radar, do all the settings from your phone back on your gun, which we're about to do, and I'll demonstrate that now. Right, so using the app, we were able to arm the radar and now proceed to fire our group. We can now disarm the radar, and we've now finished our group. So we can always go back, create another group, or we can examine this one. We can see each of the, the shots. Now I haven't entered the, the bullet's weight in here, so it's the power factor is completely wrong, obviously, and it's a 22. But you can see the velocity, not great. The highest was 1120, the lowest was 877, thank you Winchester Subsonic. Um, there was obviously one very slow one there, 877. We can go through all the details. Now if you find a funny one, you can actually go through the graph and see what happened. Now that was a misread, because we didn't, weren't getting any distances at 10, 20, 30. We only got one at 40. So what we'll do is delete that one. That's now gone from the this series. So we're now down to still 72 feet per second extreme spread, but this isn't match grade ammo. 31 feet standard deviation, four shots fired. Now as you see, as you go through each shot, 
you can see your distances. So I am getting out to 50 meters, which is actually where the target is. So it's a good way of seeing, yes, I'm actually reaching that, that distance, so it's aimed correctly. And you can see through the graph where the bullets are stopping their reading. Now the target is actually about 45 odd meters away. So yes, the bullet will run out somewhere along that line, but I can see I'm getting through to 40, so I'm quite happy. You'll find they're all probably very consistent. Oh, there's another one that's 30. So as you can see, I'm getting through to about 40 meters. The target is about 45 odd meters away. I do have a tree actually wandering around a little bit in the radar, which is not ideal for Doppler radar. You don't want things moving. It's, it's looking for changes. You can see from the graph, I'm getting a solid read right through to 40 meters. And you can see on the graph, it's kind of linear, which is what you're expecting. So if you're examining a shot and you saw an awful lot of variation, potentially that is a misread, something got on the way, such as this tree that's over here. So what we will do, we will create another series. If you can see the radar screen, it's already popped up. We will go into it. I will name it whatever I want to, in this case group two. Press last shot, and we're ready for another group. Arm the radar. That one broke the sound barrier. So as I said, shot number three broke the sound barrier, 1169. Those are getting very close. Um, for out of interest, this box is Winchester Subsonic 42 Max, listed at 1065. We go and have a look. At shot three. Again, you can see stopping their reading somewhere around after 40 meters. That's due to the range. And you can see this one here was doing 11.69. It certainly broke the sound barrier because we actually heard it. Standard deviation is only 25. So there's nothing too hinky looking there. Now, of course, you can take the SD card out of the lab radar and you can get down to meter by meter what was actually happening and record all that data. Your dashboard, showing your current group. You've got two. You can go back, see what they were, make some notes. That's it. It really is quite simple to use. There's an awful lot of data there for you to evaluate. You can then take it into calculators like JBM start calculating the BC. Just remember, you must be very accurate with your distances as well. All in all, very simple to use. The app makes it really easy. Definitely use the app if you're going to be using it, because I can actually be on the gun and arm, whereas the radar itself is out of my reach. Whereas the app can be anywhere. While I was shooting, I was able to confirm that my shots were registering, so nothing funny was happening, rather than concentrating on a small screen at the end of my rifle.